We're always chasing the shiny object, which is top line revenue, profit, and uh, you know, you're back to the grind. Um, and at any given time, you can have the rug pulled out from underneath you as a founder, new regulation, new law, lawsuit, all your equities tied up in this business, and uh, bam, you can get clocked sideways and 10, 15, 20 years of hard work could turn into nothing overnight. I know that there are founders and entrepreneurs out there who were struggling like I am. Um, and you know, my goal is to help them in, in days and weeks uh, learn all the lessons that it took me the better part of 15 years to get to. Welcome to another episode of Capability Amplifier. This is Mike Koenigs, and I'm here today with my good friend. Chuck Boyce. All right. Well, let me get this thing rolling, because did you know that cows are responsible for about 40% of global methane emissions from their belches and farts? And with one and a half billion cows in the world, each producing between 154 and 264 pounds of methane per year, that's at least 231 billion pounds of methane into our atmosphere per year. You're wondering, what does that have to do with me and my business? But here's where it gets interesting. Just imagine if you could capture all of those cow farts and convert them into electricity. I think you could probably power three countries like Portugal, France, and Italy for a whole year. Or maybe produce, I don't know, maybe 18,000 gigawatts of power. But imagine that methane was a metaphor for your business's digital exhaust. And that's where things are serious here. That's the data you collect. I'm talking your mailing list, your IP, your processes, systems, and any other valuable data that you might not even know about. Now, if that was captured and monetized, it could produce a business that is worth four times more than your existing company. That is true. So the bit about the cows, all that front end data is true, but I honestly don't know the exact calculations with regards to how many countries, cities, or homes you could power because I'm too lazy to do the math. And I could find all that information directly on Google. Maybe someone can do that for me. But what I do know is there is a ton of value in your business and that can quickly translate into increased revenue, passive income, and increased equity that you might not know about. So that leads us to our guest today. He's a longtime friend. He's a client. His name, like I said, is Chuck Boyce. And uh, what I like about him, first of all, is he is a self-taught nerd just like me. He taught himself to code. He's a serial entrepreneur. And I swear to you, he literally just sold his business today for a 40 times multiple. So in midst or in the midst of preparing for this interview, doing our research, he's been going back and forth with a, what we call a level four publicly traded company. And we're literally right now waiting for his bank account to go ding, ding, ding with a multiple comma delivery. So with that, that was the big setup. Chuck, thanks for being here, my friend. Oh, it's great to be here. Always a pleasure. All right. So we've got a lot to talk about. The biggest takeaway um, in addition to talking about your big exit and how that happened, is we're going to talk about what? What have we been working on the past few days? Well, before we get into that, let me tell you a little story, if you don't mind. Sure. And so uh, working with entrepreneurs and business owners um, always reminds me of this story that, that I heard quite some time ago about a farmer in Africa. And he had, the word had come across the plain that the, the diamonds were being found across the continent. So he was a humble farmer and said, you know what? I'm going to sell my farm and I'm going to set off to go find my wealth and, and find those diamonds. So several years go by and unfortunately, he never found the, the treasure trove of diamonds that he was looking for. And ultimately, unfortunately, he died face down on a riverbank. A few years later, the farmer that he had sold his farm to was plowing his field and found this unusual rock. Turns out it was an uncut diamond. The farmer had left his own field and sold it, and turns out it was covered in acres of diamonds. The diamonds were literally beneath his feet. And quite frankly, this is the exact same thing we see with entrepreneurs and the data that's in their business. They're constantly looking outside for the next best thing, the next mm -hmm, shiny mm -hmm. alpha. Where am I gonna get the, the more revenue, more customers, when they don't realize they are standing literally in a field of diamonds? Yeah, nicely done. That, by the way, was, um, <clears throat> you told that story this weekend 
to my wife, Vivian, and she's like, I love that story. She's a sucker for all things Africa, by the way. <laughs> but um, it really is a great metaphor right. and a good way to get things going. So let's talk a little bit about um, what just happened with you. Congratulations, okay. by the way. Thank you. Yes, uh, it's been awesome watching the uh, the the shite show. Let's just say <laughs> it's always uh, closes are very very difficult, and you've been going back and forth and back and forth answering right. ridiculous questions. But you know what? You can't take it personally. No, nope. especially when the nope. bank account gets a little bit fatter at the end of the day, or a lot, but a lot a bit fatter. But let's talk a little bit about um, what you had. Uh, the process you went through to get to the exit, because 40X is huge. Any business mm -hmm. owner gets that. And then also we're going to talk a little bit about the latest creation, Data Moo. Right. Data Moo. Uh, by the way, there's the logo. We'll make sure that we, um, we show that. Um, uh, we'll make a big screen of it. But the self-milking cow who this, feeds himself. Yep. So, so really, in, for my business, it was all about growing from that, that level one business and, and getting to the point where, um, as a level three business, what we call level three business, that I, I started to get interest from the, the industry. Otherwise, you know, nobody was really knocking on my door to, to buy my company until we got to the point where we were basically milking and taking care of all of the data and using our special sauce, all of the, the processes and the procedures that we had created over 15 years to deliver this service to, uh, to about a million and a half customers uh, across the country. Okay. And maybe just again to contextualize this for our listeners, our viewers, sure. let's, um, I know we'll tear into it in greater detail, but what's the difference between a level one, level two, level three, level four business? And... Give us some examples of those. And I know I'm going to do some case study examples too, but just okay. so we've at least got the framing sure. down. Sure. So so basically we look at four levels of business and try to figure out where we are and what steps we need and, or what assets do we have to that that will allow us to level up to the, to the next level. Mm -hmm. So level one is pretty much where we find uh, most business owners, you know, and the focus really is on how do I get more customers, more transactions? How do I keep more money um, mm -hmm. and drop drive top level growth? Uh, and that's good. And a lot of business, very successful businesses live their entire life uh, at the at the level one stage. Mm -hmm. When we talk about a level two business, now we're talking about looking a little bit outside of our own business. Um, we start looking at the relationships, the partnerships, um, and how we can have a multiplier effect um, for both our customers and the entire, uh, and, and with everyone that we interact with in, in the chain. So then we look at a level three business, and this is where we start looking at ways to monetize assets that we have within the business that we may not actually realize their, their true value. And, and I will tell you, for a long time, this was the case with my business. I didn't realize how valuable the systems that we had created could be to another company that had not figured out and not had suffered the slings and arrows of the last uh, 15 years. So this is really at level three, where we start looking at the, the data and the intellectual property uh, surrounding the company. Right. And then the ultimate for, for a lot of people, is getting to a level four company. And level four companies, what we like to call platform companies. These are companies that are integrated both deep and wide. And probably two of the most common examples thrown around would be Apple and Amazon. Look at both how they started. You know, One, an online bookseller, the other, a hardware producer. And now think about all the things that, that they're into. How much of our lives are impacted on a day-to-day -day basis by our interactions with these two companies? Mm -hmm. Right. And we'll, um, we'll tear this apart even more. Cause one of the things, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on today, besides the fact that I like you <laughs> is that we're going to not only tear this apart, but look at ways that you can take practically any business, mm -hmm. even a simple service business and think about it through the lens of how do I turn it into a level four company? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> for example, your new company that you literally just started Right. And you just sold. Right. So that's the s smartest thing ever right. for a founder, which is let's just make sure we keep the continuity going. Yeah. No um, time off. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have a re you, it's not like you could take plenty of time off if you wanted to, but mm -hmm. you're doing it because you want to. But you're designing this new business as a level four right from the start. I think that'll be Correct. a really important uh, learning experience. Um, but secondly, <clears throat> uh, earlier this year, 
I was at Peter Diamandis's Abundance 360. There's a guy in the audience, actually not in the audience. He was on stage. His name's mm -hmm. David Bl uh, Blooden, B-L-U-D-I-N. He has an organization called Link Ventures. So he's invested in over 100 companies, or the firm has. He's personally co-founded 22 of them. And five, when they sold, were unicorns, meaning all of the founders walked away billionaires. So this guy knows his stuff. And what he said on stage that is very, very aligned to what you're all about right now is he said, we have now started separating the data from the business mm -hmm. and the data side of the business is worth on average four times more than the actual business is. Now that is a relatively new development, but it also tells me ding, 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 there's so much right. opportunity right now. And that's where that metaphor of acres of diamonds are, which is the next huge opportunity especially for you as a coach, consultant, advisor, um, as a, uh, you know, with data moo, you can go into companies, find all these resources, all this data, all the processes, find interesting ways to monetize it, and then prepare the founder in such a way that they are going to generate, you know, money while they sleep right. and uh, do it effortlessly or relatively effortlessly and be able to just completely rethink the business they think they're in. So I took a long time to do that, but any comments before I ask you the next big question? Yeah, so many, like like we said, you know, their data really is the the new currency. Mm -hmm. And every time, every business owner or founder that we, we talk to uh, kind of about that, you can literally see the light bulb go off. They, they get it instantly and they go, oh yeah. Okay, good. So I think one of the next things we're going to talk about is um, how do you know if you have a business that can become a data rich business or have more value? But before we do that, um, let's go through your origin story. Okay. I, I think um, you have a great origin story, a whole bunch of it I'd never heard before. It's quite funny. And um, where'd you grow up? How were you raised? How did you get into this business? And how did you become Chuck Boyce and learn to think. And I just want to know what's your big why. You know? Sure, yeah. sure. Um, so uh, I grew up a uh, pretty humble beginnings, a uh, tiny little house down the Jersey shore um, on a major highway across the street from a strip club. Um, and uh, sweet. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. <laughs> to this day, I've never set foot inside that building. Mm -hmm. um, so not my kind of place. <laughs> nope, I got it, I got it. So, um, so we were very fortunate, though, that we were in a in a great school system, and I was fortunate enough to be in a program that in 1979 we had uh, a PC in our classroom. Now, this we we all think of these these nice little sexy devices that we have. This thing was uh, close to the size of a dishwasher, and um, we had the latest technology in storage, which was the audio cassette tape. You loaded that thing, and maybe within about 20 minutes, okay. your, your game would load. So tell everyone what the machine was, because if you're a real nerd, you're right, gonna appreciate know, this. Yeah. You'll appreciate that, yeah, that it was a Commodore PET CPM computer so pre pc pre pre um, um yeah pre pc pre microsoft and a very very uh horrible keyboard it was a square right. keyboard it was so <laughs> not use user friendly yep. at all all right yep it was so, so what uh, happened next so so fortunately like i said i got the i got bitten by the bug really uh really early and um was able to um take a bunch of courses and, and really get exposed to that so um during college one of my uh Jobs was working for uh, financial press, and our job was to take um, all of these numbers and reports out of the SEC and enter them into these massive uh, databases. So uh, it was cool. Got to work with the programmers and, and got to see how all of the the sausage was made. And at the time, these were some pretty big databases, and we were selling them to all of the major financial institutions around New York. So. With that, I've really been in the info marketing business uh, since 1989. Fast forward a couple of years, I uh, I get hired by a firm, um, tiny firm, I'm the new guy, and I get every dumpy project that comes through the door. And the way this company worked was you had to have billing at X number of times what your annual salary was. So all of the grizzled old project managers, they would hire out, because they were lazy, they would hire out all of the elements of their project. Well, I would take every dog project and end up making the company a lot of money. So. 
Fast forward Wednesday before Thanksgiving, it's time for my big review. I walk into the meeting, I've got all my data lined up to say, you know, this is what I expect as my raise and I got fired. So basically, I always tell people I got fired for making the firm too much money. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's so. a good hook. And it, and it just goes to show that early on, you had a systems mind, uh, you were uh, focused on efficiency, how do I automate? Um, and you also understood costs and cost control and where the mm -hmm. profit was. So, and you were how old at this point? Uh, 22, 23 okay. uh, at that point. Um, and then, you know, they say one door closes and window opens. Well, for me, that was a couple of weeks later, I got hired by the Estee Lauder companies in New York. Um, so I got to basically do the same work that I was doing, but on a much, much bigger stage with a lot more appreciation. So I spent five years there um, managing software development uh, for that company internationally. I had a team of about 45 people um, before I was the age of 30. Uh, got to fly all around the world, flew on the Concorde six times between New York and Paris. So that was That's kind awesome of, uh, so that was kind of cool. Then one day we're in a conference room and we're going through all of this, the, the systems and, and the status and stuff. And my boss at the time gets up there and lists 110 different systems that are used without the company. And he looks at me, he goes, you're going to be responsible for updating and making sure that all of these systems are Y2K. How many of those again? How many systems? 110 systems yeah. used in every nook and cranny of, of the company. So I left that meeting, thought on it for about five minutes, and the next morning did the only thing that a responsible 28-year-old who's about to get married in nine months uh, would do. I walked into my boss's office and I quit my job. Nice. Because I do new... I don't necessarily do. Uh, I don't necessarily do maintenance. So yeah, homework, um, homework bad. Yeah, homework bad. <laughs> homework yes. Good. Okay. Good. Good. So, All right. But but then again, that led me to to bigger stages and into the consulting world. And I got I had the good fortune to work with uh, so many great companies uh, as really kind of a firefighter troubleshooter. I was brought in for a very specific set of software and data skills that I had developed over the last you know eight years. Okay. Um, show off. Tell us some of the brands you so, worked with. Yeah. Yeah. So I got hired at McKinsey. McKinsey and company and mm -hmm. did uh, a couple global products uh, projects for them. Uh, worked with Calvin Klein uh, on an HR project that was very cool. Uh, Dun and Bradstreet, AT and T, uh, Sony. Uh, Sony. I actually worked on the Sony Jumbotron project mm. uh, for a little while. Uh, Chase Manhattan Bank and a, and a couple of others. Okay, good. So, all right. So then, um, let's talk a little bit about the. Now I had to do it for myself moment. I'm curious about the transition. What was it that made you decide I am not cut out to be an employee. I have to be an entrepreneur. I'm one of those aliens. Right. And uh, then let's get into the big meaty stuff. Yeah. Here. And so working as a consultant, you do have to have kind of an entrepreneurial mindset, especially sure for me, because yep. I, I generally was a, a fireman. I would go in and I would generally work short projects. So I had mm -hmm. to kind of be thinking along that ways. But I wanted to be able to build something that would have value long term and was not strictly a time for money uh, mm -hmm. in, endeavor. So um, as you said, I had the entrepreneurial Caesar, as our buddy Michael Gerber would call it, and said, you know what, I've got to start building stuff um, for the long term for me and for my family. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, good. So let's get into the data exhaust phenomenon. We purposely opened up the <laughs> episode with uh, the cow fart thing yep. um, because it is, you know, you think about it. I, I was talking to Abby, our, our unicorn number one, who's responsible for organizing and yep. structuring everything we're doing today. And um, that is the number one cause of um, what's it called? basically global warming right. and, and greenhouse and, gas. Yeah, yeah. Is, is cow burps and farts. And, you know, a good entrepreneurial mind will be like, how do I package that and turn it into money? <laughs> okay. And, uh, and I wanted to talk about farts and burps today with you because uh, we're guys after all, but let's just talk a little bit about, you know, what led you to creating data moo. And um, you know, now that you've had this exit, you've had plenty of time to think this is your third, fourth, maybe fifth act in your own Correct. career. But I just asked you about a dozen questions, but I'm going to let you interpret <laughs> it and tell me what you want to tell me. Uh, and then I think we can get into like who this is for and who's who's best for it. But let's kind of do that transition of sure. like, what's the big value? What's the big deal here? Right. Uh, again, kind of back to the, the field of diamonds. There's all of this data sitting under our feet um, and so much of it goes 
uncaptured, kind mm -hmm. of like the gas coming out of the, the back of the cow. Mm -hmm. um, are, we all have this digital exhaust. So, you know, the, the whole, um, everything is getting monitored, everything gets measured, and all of that data goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times, owners and founders aren't thinking of that. They're thinking of that as a nuisance because yep. we have new laws to deal with, and they're not seeing that to be the asset that it, that it truly can be, yeah. um, and how game-changing it could be for their business. Good. So, uh, and in, in that, it's again, yes, you're, you said it right at the beginning, we're always chasing the shiny object, which is top line revenue, profit, and uh, you know, you're back to the grind. Um, and at any given time, you can have the rug pulled out from underneath you as a founder, new regulation, new law, lawsuit, all your equities tied up in this business, and uh, bam, you can get clocked sideways. And 10, 15, 20 years of hard work could turn into nothing overnight. So let's find some ways to um, notice the diamonds. First of all, right. you gotta get educated, right. but then how do you monetize them as well? So um, maybe let's uh, take that to like, who is the future miner of the data right. or taking advantage of data exhaust. And the first time full credit goes to, the first time I heard the term data exhaust yep. was Howard Getz. Yeah. We were yeah. together that, that was great. and um, I researched it afterwards and, and it's mentioned a lot, but um, uh, tell us a little bit about the who this is for to perk up the ears and then let's get into um, deconstructing some some opportunities. Sure. Yeah. If you look at any type of business, you know, every business has some kind of data flowing through it and being captured. And I really focus on helping, you know, entrepreneurs, owners, founders, CEOs, kind of top level uh, executives that that really need to deliver additional value uh, to their um, to their organization. So for us, ideal clients are in the, you know, generally have consistent high value um, or high volume transactions because we're going to have a lot of uh, very valuable data re uh, related to that. Um, and ideally, companies that have a proven track record of working with, you know, outside con contractors, consultants and advisors. You know, I spent a good chunk of my career being that that guy mm -hmm. and the difference you could always tell walking on assignment who really wanted you there and, and who didn't. Yeah, uh, so that would also mean psychologically they've seen huge ROIs. Right. You know, so they know when I invest in this, I get something big out of it, and they see something I can't see and right. save me a ton of time. So that's that's very legit. Okay, yeah, I'm always a big fan of buying speed. Anytime mm -hmm. I can buy speed, I I yep. want to definitely do that. Um, companies that work well with us are, have documented systems and processes. They have a, a kind of a secret sauce built in there, and and the th funny thing about that is, and for, it was the case for me is, I didn't even realize uh, that uh, we had there. So, you know, every business has a, a bunch of data that's either stored within it or flowing through it. But ultimately, you know, we're looking to work with people that uh, are looking for shortcuts, for quick ways to get to increased revenue and increasing the value of their, their company. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about... Um we could either do some real life examples and kind of re-review the level one, level two, level three, level four. Cause yeah. I think ultimately um, after seeing what you've done where you sold your level three company to a level four business, which again, level three meaning, meaning um, where you've got tools, services, licenses, apps, APIs. So you figured out how to um, take a bunch of stuff and sell it to a bunch of companies, mm -hmm. but as data. Right. And then they bought you for a combination of the data you have, the access you have, the unique way you massaged it and monetized it. And I happen to know a couple ins other things that I don't know if we can talk about specifically, but um, uh, is there anything else that you wanna add there about that or, or should we just kind of do this sequentially? Well, in, in my case, it was also about the, the relationships and, uh, and, and the network and, and being able to scale from a kind of single point of service to being a national service provider um, 
and, and we pulled that off in about a with about a three week time frame, And the only reason we could do that is because we had the, this solid core. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, it took a, a sledgehammer to the side of that brain when the opportunity came and said, yeah, we're, we're gonna do this, we're gonna roll this out. And that ultimately was the catalyst for us becoming a, cattle, uh, a um, level three company. Okay, so what I think would be useful is maybe if we deconstruct the business he just sold. Okay and um, use a case study or two from some of the clients you've worked with. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, so let's go from you being a level one to becoming a level two and um, where you may have helped a level one become a level two. Is that fair? Do you sure. have, do you have yeah. something in, yeah, in think, the arsenal? I think we can, yeah, okay. so, so level one is, is, again, we're all looking for kind of the, the business basics as I call them, you know, increased revenue, uh, increased profitability. Uh, and there are so many businesses that are run by folks that are really good at what they do, but they can't necessarily see uh, the levers that are within their reach. Um, so we have a we have a bunch of tools that we've developed over the last years that allow us to kind of almost drag and drop uh, and and generate a big ROI pretty quickly for for that focus uh, of business. So for example, we've worked with several people who who like one of our tools um, that are wasting tons of money on their online ads. We all want more customers. We mo want more people to the front of our store. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, online advertising gets more and more expensive every day. It seems mm -hmm. like hour by hour rates are going up. So imagine uh, one of our clients uh, was TrueDog. They were spending $3 million a year on Facebook ads. Um, they, we literally dropped one of our tools onto their website, proved to them, showed them half of their traffic was bots, mm -hmm. weren't real people, could never buy their product. So using that and, and giving them access to that data, they were able to then take that data back to Facebook and say, hey, all of this traffic is garbage. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, how big was the check? Uh, well, it, apparently it was multiple checks uh, yeah. over, but uh, they got a significant uh, amount back covered by NDA, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but the owner- Well, I uh, actually read a, uh, her testimonial, yeah. the client's testimonial. So you can you can mention that, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, just yep. tell us. So, uh, so well, she, <laughs> she said, uh, uh, basically, she really appreciated getting those checks, those refund checks back on a, on a nearly uh, weekly basis for about the half of her business, uh, for half of her Facebook uh, ad spend. Okay, so I'm going to do the math. Can I do the math out loud? Is that all right? Well, yeah. Okay, so spent three million, got about half back. So you got a million and a half dollars back. Somewhere in that ballpark, yeah. Okay, all right. So you can't say the rest. That's all right. right. It was okay if I said it, though. Yeah. Is that all right? I'm like, oh, okay. So all Facebook's right. going to come knocking on your door, not mine. Oh, yeah. So, um, but ultimately, you know, by doing that, that then opened those resources up for her to continue to grow her business. And uh, just a couple of years ago, she managed to uh, sell that company um, to, again, to, to a bigger firm. And why, why would that be? Well, one of the reasons is she was able to grow it with not any more overhead, with keeping right. the expenses in line. And again, that, that was such a simple tool mm -hmm. that just got dropped on her site and literally gave her the ability to, to start moving up the ladder and leveling that. up her business. Okay, so that also means that uh, if you're positioning your business to sell and you can go out and say, oh, by the way, my cost of acquisition is half mm -hmm. of what it was last year, um, well, that's pretty attractive, yeah. and that is a competitive advantage as well. So yeah. one tool giving you that, okay, that's, that's legit. The other nice thing is then you tend to get better traffic because they know you're paying attention. Yeah, yep. Okay, um, so let's talk about you going from a level one provider to a level two provider. Right, so when we started, we were providing services uh, just in the state of Delaware, you know, for just a handful uh, of clients, and we were always struggling with the same thing. How do we get more people to the front door? How do we get more uh, business uh, in? And it wasn't until we had an opportunity when someone said, hey, I was actually, uh, I, was, I was Christmas shopping at Walmart. I got a call, we'd put a bid out for a national contract and they said, hey, you won the bid, you got six weeks to, to get this set up. So that was the sledgehammer that mm -hmm. said, okay, you now need to figure this out and we had to level up very quickly. Fortunately, I had some great business relationships and was, was able to tap in and we signed up 72 uh, partners um, in all 50 states in DC to help uh, fulfill on that contract. And some of those partners have been with us right through, uh, right through the sale. So okay. hey, action taker. 
Mike Koenigs here, and I just wanted to interrupt for a second and let you know that if you're ready to reinvent yourself and your business, go to connecttomike.com to learn more and book a conversation with me right now. All right, back to the episode. And just to um, to to take this from a level one, meaning you're doing essentially, we'll call it a transactional yeah. business, more or less one-on-one, no extra channels, no leverage. Right to a level two, which was partners, channels, relationships, selling the same thing to lots of different customers. So in your case, 72 new buyers. Right. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right, good. So let's go from a a level two to a level three example. Sure. So um, level two, I'm sorry, we're going to level one to level level two, level three. Well, we can go- We're going to level two. Yeah, let's well let's let's talk for, about the level I two. guarantee you there will be people who will it'll drive them nuts if we jump. So go ahead and go <laughs> one to two, and then we'll okay. do two to three. We'll do it sequentially, otherwise people are like, whatever happened right. to what's that? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I data lost my place. So um no, so, that's my job. That's my job. Okay. <laughs> so 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 we have a client um uh, a new client that, that we're working and we're looking at his business um, who is in the transportation and logistics space. Uh, so generally a uh, super high volume space, generally very tight margin space. Mm-hmm. Um, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. We were just with him this so, last weekend. Yeah, yes. we, okay, we, just, uh, we just saw him. So, um, uh, so as, as we were talking to him uh, about his business, uh, this company ships 20 million packages per year. It's insane. And yeah. and we got talking about how much of the, the data are you capturing for that? Oh yeah, and for how many clients, right? right. So there's a whole bunch of customers. Hundreds of clients yep. to, th- to probably millions of customers mm-hmm. uh, shipping, the, shipping these packages. Um, and, and really, probably one of the, the biggest examples of, of digital exhaust that, that I've seen in a while, the amount of data that just blows through that mm-hmm. doesn't get captured um, was staggering, uh, again, based on the, the transaction volume. So so as we're talking with them, we're like, well, here are some other ideas. I was like, if you could capture that data, you know, do you think your customers would like to meet each other? Um, you know, do you offer ride-alongs? Can you broker deals between various um, product categories that aren't competitive, but definitely complementary? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you could just see the light bulb go off going, yeah. So that's going to do two things for, for his business. A, it's going to drive his transaction volume. So his level one business is going to benefit beca- with additional um, transactions coming through, but now he p- puts himself in in really a, a toll gate position, um, and he can work those deals between his various clients um, and get paid for those and increase the value of his company. Right. So the the net net is um, he could potentially increase sales by introducing, and he knows the data, he knows the customers. Yep. Um, and say, I'm gonna help you cross promote and you're gonna use my printing, my distribution, um, which he could probably increase sales for his clients if there's any crossover at all by five to 20%. Oh, easily. That's easily legit. And his own internal volume, like you say, his level one shipping business, you know, if it's 20% times even 20, Mm -hmm. okay, that's legitimately 400% increase in volume Mm -hmm. if you stack it all together. Right. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, so that's from level one to level two. Right. Let's take you from uh, your, let's take your business from level two to level three. First of all, let's explain what that is. Sure. And then let's do a hypothetical with his business at a level three. Sure. Okay, good. So, So for me, um, moving from the two to three, so level two was really the ability for us to put in what I call the network effect uh, and really uh, ask um, who not have. So, so we mm-hmm. increased our business um, without increasing our overhead uh, substantially by building out uh, this network to support a, a, a national uh, footprint. So yeah. as we're building that, um, and we, we didn't realize it at the time, we had to put systems and processes and procedures, and we started collecting more data on, on packages and documents that were being tracked through our, um, our network, mm-hmm. and which really then turned us into a level three business. So a level three business is where we're looking at the, the, the secret sauce, the intellectual property, the processes, the procedures, the data that's within the business that could, can be monetized within the business, 
and is now gonna start having value to other people in the marketplace. And again, whether that be apps, whether it be licensing data, um, uh, or any of a, a bunch of different ways that we can take that data and see who else wants it mm -hmm. and, and in what format uh, yeah. do let's, they need Let's it. do a real life example uh, as best you can. I know you, you're limited in terms of what you can specifically say, but you, can you get kind of specific or can we use a, a case study, a customer case study? Yeah, so, so we could talk about, um, uh, we had a client who was a bankruptcy attorney who was, uh, was paying for a bunch of leads uh, and um, was uh, was not converting his leads as well as he wanted, and, and leads were getting more and more expensive. Came back to us and say, "Hey, do you have anybody else that is um, that's looking for these same type of, of folks?" So we kind of went to a couple of other customers and, and were able to to put together a little syndicate of a credit counselor, a marriage counselor, a divorce attorney, and a bankruptcy attorney. They're all generally um, in, in, this, in the same ecosystem, that they're all generally looking at, at the same people uh, because generally what we found is if you are going through, if you're having going through a bankruptcy, unfortunately, a lot of marriages don't survive that. So you're going to need, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe some marriage counseling or, or debt counseling um, or ultimately, um, uh, you know, a divorce attorney. So... Um, what we were able to do is the syndicate then ended up basically getting free leads. So they, they were all getting now free leads because they were liquidating all of them. They were paying for the ones that they were converting. Um, they didn't have to pay for the ones that they didn't. Uh, and, and they were basically able to triple their leads um, at no cost out of pocket. So they mm -hmm. had somebody else um, paying for their leads. So kind of what we would look to do um, if I was just a level one business, it, it would be looking for a, a self-liquidating offer. Yeah. Well, now we can create the, these little syndicates uh, and do the same thing. So back to our fulfillment friend, um, he could absolutely be in that, that same position. Mm -hmm. He can start building that data warehouse asset because he knows who the returns are coming back. He could, he could build a database of chronic returners or refunders. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's data that certainly anybody in the e-commerce space is, is going to be desperate for. Right. And that basically means then he can turn each one of those into little services mm -hmm. that are subscriptions, which will be like, hey, send your purchases through my chronic refunder mm -hmm. um, slash, you know, the deadbeat clients, uh, chargeback people, right. and uh, I'll do that on a transaction basis. And um, and you can have access to this as long as you're allowing us to aggregate the data right. um, as well and, and without violating whatever kind right. of whatevers. Uh, you know, those pesky yeah. laws, um, but... Um, we have some good resources to help keep everybody on the right side. Of the right road. on, right yeah. on. I kid, I kid, <laughs> I kid, I kid the rules. But beyond that, um, so again, it's just looking through the filter of how do I take either aggregate data or this data and create a service out of it, which Correct. can we talk a little bit more about your business and how you were able to do that? Sure. So, mm -hmm. so we had all of the the intellectual property. We were gathering up um, all of the data, and and then started to get noticed in, in the marketplace. You know, we had, we had turned into that that level three uh, database, and we were able to then start building on our platform uh, the ability for us to take data in and out and offer data back to some of our other providers. So that. Um, we then, you know, they, they would come to us uh, for data and information based on the, the clients that we were working with. Uh, and ultimately, that is it, that is what made our company sell for the multiple it did versus what traditionally in, in that industry would have been about one, one and a half times mm -hmm. um, uh, versus the, the 40 that we were able to get. Right. And I'm going to be, because I know what I know here, um, and I'm not going to break any rules for you, um, you had a whole bunch of little services, mm -hmm. some of which you didn't even own. You effectively brokered. So you were right. doing arbitrage. Yep. But what you had were exclusive contracts for each of these services. So you had 72 core buyers. They, in turn, had a lot of little buyers. And 
um, everyone's licensing this information. Right. Um, and a lot of them didn't even know that you're the source. Right. So you're the secret sauce, right. which actually made it even more valuable. And they had the big buyer in your case had to protect right. their, yeah. um, their continuity of their business, which is dependent upon you, the right. relationships were, which were dependent on you and you had exclusivity. And the fact that you had a lot of services that they and other companies were dependent on. Right. Okay. Yeah. So did, did I break any rules there by doing that? No, you're good. And I, I can actually go a, a little bit further there. That's what when, I was hoping. We, <laughs> when we were we were in the process and, and we were talking about people, two people that were interested in uh, in potentially acquiring our services uh, at that time. And, and we'd have discussion about our kind of our core service. And they're like, oh, no, no, we buy that from XYZ company. I'm like, cool. I'm like, you know who XYZ company buys it from? Uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> so, so there was a, they were, there was a couple mm -hmm. times that people were like, oh, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so that, that was, um, that, that, the, yeah, that was, it was kind of a cool position to be in. So, Surprise. Yeah. So I, I want to just kind of take a little mini exit before we go from three to four. Okay. <clears throat> because, um, there's a lot of nuance to thinking. Mm -hmm about going from a transactional based business, the level one to we'll call it channel partner who based business level two. That's where you get your multiplier effect. Right. And then level three is when you effectively again, turn your business into apps, APIs, services, things that people can subscribe to right. having exclusive control and and also taking advantage of arbitrage right that really requires someone who's done this many times and for a long time to be able to see this this gets back mm -hmm. to the acres of diamonds metaphor which is these are not obvious and a lot of times you could have a whole bunch of you know you literally have a closet full of what amounts to um invaluable ancient art <laughs> and someone would have just sold it at a flea market um, or throw it, brought it to the dump. Mm -hmm. And and that happens all the time. It must completely drive you crazy when you walk in and see opportunity like this because you, you're. it's like, what do they say, shooting fish in a barrel. There's right, opportunity right. everywhere you go. Now you just got to pay attention to which opportunity you want to pay attention to. Right, a lot of times it's prioritizing is is the hardest thing. It's yeah. rare that we we talk to a business owner and we don't immediately see have three to six really solid ideas. And and I know I was a business owner for a long time. When you're down in the trenches and you're focused in on the business and you're focused on the level one aspects of your business, driving mm -hmm. top line, saving money, putting more money on in your pocket, it's harder to have the the macro view and, and look around and say, hey, what else do we have here mm -hmm. um, that that we could start selling. Yeah. So it really comes down to, um, first of all, knowing that there is a buyer, mm -hmm. knowing what has value and knowing how to package that in such a way that um, it produces income right away and equity. So you got to create a moat around it to right. protect yourself. And, and you know, what you've managed to assemble, because I've looked at your toolkit, you've got, first of all, a whole bunch of things that people can effectively private label mm -hmm. and package that you have, so they they can be in the level three business really, really fast, plus cookie cutters of contracts, agreements, ways of sifting and sorting and figuring out what, assessing what's real. All right, let's go from uh, three to four then, unless you've got something to add to that. Cool, just, yeah, one other quick thing on the level three that, mm -hmm. that sometimes hangs people up. They think that they have to to make, buy, or they, they have to make or do whatever the, the uh, that they're trying to add. You know, that yeah. they have to be the guy to build the API or to build the software. And, and we've got such great resources that, that can do that and, and without really adding too much um, to the overhead and, and not putting more stress on your on your existing infrastructure. So the the key thing there to think is you know back to the classic you know who not how mm -hmm. um, you don't have to do these yourself, but you have to get with a partner that knows how to bring that that particular thing um, to to market. So then so from the the three to four really now is um so so we always look at you know the the big the amazon the apple the disney kind of the the obvious ones and and i know a lot of people out there thinking like well 
uh, I'm never gonna be the, the next Amazon or Apple. Well, you don't have to necessarily be playing at the uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue. You can be a very healthy, mm -hmm. you know, $100 million platform form company. And I know as we've started uh, Datamoo, our um, goal has always been to be the right size platform company for us. Um, and so how, so we're basically starting with the foundation. We're, we're eating our own dog food mm -hmm. um, or I guess our own cow feed um, and, uh, and, and really kind of building our business so that we can be a model for others as well. Yeah. But in a way you're a platform business creating platform businesses right. or guiding uh, founders through the process of going from one to two, from two to three. And really the big multiples through at least your lens are for the two to three to fours. Right. Um, because twos, um, it's a different business. It's creating channels is very different than, than uh, realizing IP and systemization and packaging that and being able to sell it, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's selling it as a service. And before we uh, dive in, why don't you talk a little bit about like what, what, makes Apple a level four, what makes Amazon a level four? Because I think there's some good nuance there if you just kind of go through that and then let's drive, um, well, take us where you want to take us. Yeah, so so really level four as a platform company, you know, when when we look at it, they're, they're into so many different things. And, and really uh, of the two, I think uh, Amazon is my favorite, um, though, though comparable to the Apple story. When you look at, you know, the, the initial idea of selling books online, well, what, what skills have they developed and been able to monetize as Amazon has grown? Well, certainly they had to figure out how to ship them. So, so they became, you know, one of the leading logistics and shipping companies in the world. And now they make that a, a service available to other folks. You know, they became a, uh, an expert at warehousing and moving data, uh, moving product and positioning product all around the country because... I know at my home in Florida, it still amazes me. I can go on at seven o'clock in the morning and I can have something on my doorstep by lunch. Yeah. Um, and uh, not a lot of companies have developed uh, that expertise and, that, and that's all driven by, by data. They know who's gonna buy what, where, and, and how to stage that. Um, and then to run all of this, the, the computing infrastructure that they have built. And again, nerd at heart, um, remember the, the, big, uh, the big IBM mainframes. And mm -hmm. now when we look at, at data for data services and what Amazon has built with their AWS platform um, and then said, hey, we built this for us, but but it's going to have a lot of value to other uh, folks in the marketplace. So I know it's a tool that we use frequently. It's a tool that the government uses, uh, multiple governments use. So they were able to, again, it's that multiplier effect, go deep and wide and, and take their core competency and make it available to others. Yeah. I think that the brilliant thing is they built it for themselves first right. and then turn it into a subscription platform. So, um, and I, I've got a- uh, They've a, monetized the expense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite brilliant. So that, that again, that in itself is a new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. That's fairly non-obvious. Right. Okay, and then Apple, uh, let's uh, kind of tunnel down there because you and I've talked a lot about like, what is it that makes Apple the, at any given time, the most, valuable company in the world with the exception of the fake other <laughs> company in Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, that, um, <laughs> whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah. So again, Apple starting, starting with hardware and, and has really just kind of grown the circle out, um, in, in almost like concentric circles. They started with the hardware. Now we're going to do the software. Um, now what other types of, you know, they brought us the, the iPod. Um, well, we've got this thing that kind of looks like a phone. Can we take that and can we turn, make a phone? So now we've got the, the iPhone. Um, and they've done that with keeping the, their IP internal, um, but also then extending out into partnerships, strategic ac ac uh, acquisitions, creating a marketplace. Mm -hmm. There's such a need, there's such a desire for marketplaces, for, for the ability to for us to give small creators an opportunity um, to, to really follow their, their own dreams. And Apple has, has certainly been a leader in the marketplace. Um, to, the, to Apple Pay, so you know, payment processing. Um, they did a joint venture with Goldman Sachs Bank. So every time I use my Apple Pay, it goes on my, uh, my Apple card. Um, and, uh, and they had the deal with Barclays Bank before that. So they're really smart in seeing, okay, as we're moving forward, you know, 
They didn't need to create a bank. They went out, they found one, they partnered with it. They added their special sauce to that relationship and re eliminated all of the friction for, for all of those transactions. Yep, and pretty soon you'll be given <laughs> Apple, uh, you know, one, two, three, four thousand dollars per month. You'll get brand new hardware as soon as it comes out. You'll have your car, all of your subscription services, all your data, all your software. And, um, you know, other companies would wish they could pull this off. Right. But at this point, it's it's in my opinion, it's it's almost if not impossible to catch up, given the fact that they're producing their own chips. Right. And with the current state of the world and it's it's changed, they, they, they have an enormous amount of control over the things that have um, decades mm -hmm. long strategic value. And and again, I want to bring this back home, pull the, the balloon back <laughs> to the earth and say so. I thought you were doing udders there for a second. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello everyone, yeah, I grew up in Minnesota. Um, but uh, what, how do we bring this home and make it meaningful to the business owner? Like, how's this work? And what are the steps that a founder would go through to start to realize and go from one to two to two to three to and three to four? So, so we've developed some really great tools uh, that that we make available out there, you know, um, and we're going to certainly make them available here. But first thing is is really kind of looking at where you're at. So mm -hmm. to do that, we, we have a tool we call the Value Multiple Scorecard. Um, really helps get an idea of kind of where you're at, um, kind of what what level you fit in today, and then we'll help you kind of focus in the future as to uh, you know what are some of the, the steps that you can take. Um, we follow that up with the profit levels worksheet um, because you know we always want to make sure that that we're increasing the the value of the company. Um, and you know I've been an owner for a long time. I like to take home uh, a bigger paycheck at the end of the week. So we can follow that on with um, our sources of hidden value FAQ. Again, like we said, standing in the middle of the field, the acres of diamonds, uh, sometimes we're just too close to see and understand um, the value of the assets we're in. Mm -hmm. So we kind of help take a spotlight and help you take that spotlight and shine it into the nooks and crannies under the desks and find out where those, uh, th those hidden assets are. Uh, and then finally, we've got a, a pretty in-depth masterclass and uh, PDF workbook that we put together so that you can start working through these uh, with these tools uh, and really kind of figure out where you're at, figure out some of the, the next steps and really generate some ideas for you and your team to start implementing some of these strategies. That's good. So the bottom line is... Um here, check check this out. Head over to datamoo.com, <clears throat> um, click the button and get the downloadable goodies. Yep. So you got a scorecard for figuring out um, where the value can be multiplied, the worksheet for figuring out um, where the profit, the multiples are, the sources of hidden value, which are the non-obvious plays, mm -hmm. how to realize and turn assets into valuable levels. And then the master class, which, well, full disclosure, you and I have recorded, right. which actually gets a, a, a little more in detail about what it's like to work uh, with you and your team. So, um, all right, well, what else should we cover that we haven't? Um, I, I think we have a pretty good um, idea. And certainly, you know, we try to pr put out as much value, much information that mm -hmm. we can. Um, but ultimately, you know, sometimes some, some folks are going to need help. And, and we get asked, you know, well, how can we work together? And, and we do that in several different ways. We're, we're frequently hosting uh, roundtables, generally half day. We'll bring in a carefully curated group of uh, entrepreneurs and, and owners, and we'll kind of walk you through these steps um, and, and walk you through the tools and, and be able to kind of discuss uh, and ask some some pro questions. Um, beyond that, uh, we offer a group workshop. Again, we can bring in a small group uh, and work with my team and, and say, okay, let's really come out with not only the assessment portions, but let's actually put together some plans. Let's connect you with some resources uh, and uh, let, let's introduce you to some of our partners uh, that really can help you level up to, the, to your next uh, step. And then, you know, finally, there uh, I, I take a very small number of one-on-one -on -one clients a, a year um, where you can work with me directly uh, and we will 
take a, uh, a fine tooth comb through your business and, and really come out with a comprehensive plan to take you from the level you're at to the level that you wanna be. So you might be a one uh, and you might wanna get to that four and, and we can work together uh, over a period and, and really map that plan out and, and develop some accountability uh, and make sure that you get access to all the resources that you're gonna need to, to be successful. Okay, no, it's, um, it's super clear and I've known you now for probably, I think we met pr almost 15 years yeah. ago is my guess. Traffic guys are instant customer days and right. beyond. Yep. And I've watched your evolution. And I mean, it's it's in a way, it's kind of a miracle that we're here on the day you're selling this business because how long have you had the business you're you've sold you sold today? How many years uh, has it been? Yeah, it's been fit it's we've had the business about 15 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was right around then. So yeah. I think I I really I caught came to you, you looking for tools. Yes. For and our I, level one. I caught you. Literally, when you were going from level one to level two, you're mm -hmm. in that dirty transition, yep. from what I recall. And um, watching you evolve and also see where you are today and, and having these distinctions, um, you know, one of the things that's happened with Dan Sullivan and team is Dan really is talking about this right now um, a lot about, you know, platform is, is on his mind. Mm -hmm. He's thinking about it a lot. And, um, and this notion of, what a level one, a level two, a level three, a level four is, is it's um, it's one of those things that's so simple and you, um, yet it's it's quite profound, right. especially when you think about the distinctions of uh, how to realize the money. And this is in the parlance of strategic coach. This is very much a free zone style business where you're working with complementary non-competitive businesses right. and creating massive value that didn't exist before. Um, and the evolution of business where the value of your data and your digital exhaust exceeds the value of your mm -hmm. core business and what you're doing. So I, I'm super excited about what you're doing with Datamoo and um, uh, and you know, literally as soon as we get done with this interview, I'm inter I'm, um, I'm going to introduce you to a bunch of businesses that I think would are right fits for this. And I challenge everyone watching today, um, to head over. That's you to, to <laughs> datamoo.com. Um, get the goodies that Chuck's put together for you. They'll be very, very valuable. Keep an eye on what he's doing. And if you ever get a chance to join in on one of his uh, round tables where you get to just brainstorm, that's a short process of workshop where you're actually gonna start working on and getting into the work. So one's discovery, the other one is um, realization or work with them one-on-one -on -one where you're actually doing the hard implementation. You're making this go and you're getting access to his resources potentially white label some of his IP that you could use, or, uh, you know, it's, it's a really low cost, low impact way to not have to develop a whole business mm -hmm. that you can license out and go through the process and learn this with him. You know, it's, it's the closest thing to hand holding I've seen to date. So I'm gonna give you the last word one more time. Anything else that you wanna add before we finish this episode? Nope. Uh, super excited to, to be on this this journey. I know that there is so much value. I know that there are founders and entrepreneurs out there who were struggling like I am. Um, and, you know, my goal is to help them in, in days and weeks uh, learn all the lessons that it took me the better part of 15 years to get to. So it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Um, I will share um, everything that I've learned, um, including the ugly parts. Um, yeah. And we'll uh, and you can get it done. Totally, totally. Well, and get to the uh, the promised land, which yes. hopefully is the big exit yes. or um, whatever your your third, fourth, or fifth act is, right. like you're doing right now. Yep. I mean, it's just to have that freedom and just have the ah. Oh. So, with that, we are very close to having a cocktail. Yes, and. Um, and I'm going to turn to you again. Head on over to Chuck's site, datamoo.com. Learn more, get the goodies, see if you want to work with them to get your business and level up. So with that, uh, this capability amplifier. Chuck, let's say goodbye to everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks.